y'all it's amanda and this is my texas zone 8 garden and today you are going to be watching the flower gardener preparing her vegetable seeds for my 2024 garden Okay, so one of my big goals this year is to do a lot more companion planting and be able to mix more flowers and vegetables together. I think it's going to create, first of all, I think it's going to create a beautiful look within my garden. I like the whimsical quality of having, you know, vegetables and, you know, this edible plants mixed in with my flowers. I think it just sounds beautiful. I also think it's going to do a lot to bring a lot of beneficial insects into my garden, which I think is super important, especially since I'm someone who doesn't like to like spray for anything. Um, it's not that I'm like against spraying, you know, any kind of insecticides or anything. It's not that I'm against it. It's more of laziness. I don't, I don't want to, I just don't want to, I don't want to spend the money on it and I don't want to spend the time on it. So it very much is just like, you know, survival of the fittest in my garden. And then third, I do think that it's going to add, um, it's going to continue to grow the quality soil, to create a quality soil within my garden if I'm using different types of plants in different places. I think that that's going to help overall for the soil quality within my garden. With that being said, I'm not real big on giving up very much space for my vegetables. <laughs> I prefer mostly to um, grow them in pots if possible. And I do have a new system I'll be using this year that I'll show you all once we get to planting these all outside. I don't grow tons and tons of vegetables or edible plants at this point in time because it's just not my focus. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy having fresh tomatoes or um, bell peppers. That's mainly been my focus in the past is peppers and tomatoes. So this year I'm gonna be continuing with the tomatoes, the bell peppers, and I'm gonna be adding an eggplant. Okay, so a couple of things. I've been doing um, research, reading books. So a couple of different books. This first book I got is The Backyard Harvest. 50 container gardening projects to grow food, flowers, and more. And that's been really fun because it just has a lot of like fun, silly ideas, recyclable ideas for growing things like vegetables and flowers within containers. So that's been really fun. And this is by, the author is Susan Patterson. So um, I'll put this, I'll, I'll add this into my um, Amazon storefront if you're interested. And the other one I'm doing is Vegetables, Vegetables Love Flowers, Companion Planting for Beauty and Bounty. And this is by Lisa Mason Ziegler, which if you've read Cool Flowers, you'll recognize that name. And this has been a fun one. The idea of mixing them, what, what goes well together, just things along those lines. So it's been really fun to kind of focus on these two books to kind of give me a little bit more information. Yes, I can find all of this on YouTube. So you don't have to buy a book. You can find tons of information online without buying the book. I'm just someone who actually really loves having a book in hand. I think is really fun. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with tomatoes. Let me talk to you um, a little bit about tomatoes and then I'll talk to you about the varieties I'm growing. I just forgot. I, I forgot to even look in the mirror. <laughs> before I started filming. Hopefully it's fine. <laughs> okay. I love growing tomatoes. I think they are so much fun. I have had lots and lots of success growing tomatoes and I have had lots of failures growing tomatoes. So what I'm going to be doing is really kind of talking to you about starting tomatoes from seed from a flower growers point of view, because I feel like, um, vegetable gardening or gardening, like an edible garden is so completely different from a flower garden yet so similar, if that makes sense. There's just different strategies for both. So this is gonna be the point of view of a flower gardener's mind for starting vegetables by, from seed. So one of the first things you need to know about tomatoes is indeterminate versus determinate. And this is two different types of tomatoes. An indeterminate is a tomato that doesn't have a stopping size. Does, the plant does not have a, you know, a specific size. The plant continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Could be eight, nine, 10 feet tall, right? And it will grow and continue to produce fruit after fruit after fruit after fruit throughout your entire growing season until it gets to the point where it either dies off from excessive heat, like in Texas, or it dies off from the cold. Now a determinate size is when the tomato plant is going to grow to a certain height and stop. It's going to produce a flush of beautiful fruit 
and then it's going to be done. So it's just a very determinate stopping point in its growth and production. Now, both indeterminate and determinate have a really cool thing about them. Tomato plants in general are able to grow lots and lots of roots on the entire length of their stem. So with that in mind, when we are starting tomatoes from seed, we're going to use a process that's going to help us produce more roots along the stem of the tomato, therefore producing a more robust, healthier plant that's going to have a higher production yield. Okay, now that y'all know what indeterminate and determinate is, let's talk about the varieties I'm going to be starting. Okay, the first one is a determinate, so it's going to grow to a specific size, specific um, round of production and then stop. And this is called a 42 day tomato. And I bought it for the exact reason you're hearing. It's a, you know, produces in a very short amount of time. It is one of the world's earliest tomatoes and it also has excellent flavor. Small one ounce fruits are bright red and have very few seeds. While most early tomatoes originate from cooler climates, the 42 day tomato is believed to have come from Mexico. It is rather unique as it does well in both cool and warm climates climates an excellent choice for pots so the reason I chose this is, is number one does well in pots secondly it can handle a little bit of cooler climate so I can get it out a little bit earlier and it handles hotter climates as well so I actually extend this whole growing season for this tomato one thing about my particular area is there's really kind of two distinct growing seasons we have spring into early summer then we have everything dies in the heat of the summer and then we start again late summer into fall is our second round so while a lot of people have a huge amount of production in the middle of their summer that's the big time here for me in this area that's when we have 30 plus days of triple degree temps and we're not really putting seeing a lot of production from um, plants such as my tomatoes and or peppers. Now that has certainly been my experience. There are some of you guys who are more seasoned vegetable growers, probably have had different experiences or have tips and tricks for helping limp these plants through the hottest parts of the summer. If you do, make sure you drop that information below in the comments. Okay, so um, I did wanna say all of these are from MI Gardener. Love MI Gardener, love the prices, love the information that's provided. Um, the next variety is an indeterminate, so it will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, and it is called Orange Ox Heart Tomato. And this Virginia heirloom is a stunning ox heart shaped variety, beef steak style tomato with very little seeds or gel. Plants produce many tomatoes weighing around 16 to 32 ounces on average. The plants are very disease resistant and will produce late into the season. The well-balanced flavor of this variety makes it ideal for any recipe. So I picked this, one of the specific things I picked this for is because it says that it's um, disease resistant, which I'm all for that. <laughs> if, if, if my plants aren't finicky, I, I'm all for that. I also chose it because it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. I've seen a couple of other gardeners grow it and I just, I want it in my garden. Okay, the next one I purchased completely for the look of it. So I hope it tastes good too. It is called Constoluto, Constoluto, Constoluto. It is called Constoluto Genovese Tomato. And it is an indeterminate as well. And this Italian slicing tomato bears high disease resistant yields. The fruits are red and ribbed, a unique shape compared to the traditional round tomato. Use this sweet and juicy variety as a right off the vine snack or slice up to toss into a salad. And um, I was really excited to start this one. I just really love the look of its kind of like crinkly form. I thought it would be really fun. And then the final variety I'm starting is called Moneymaker Tomato. And this is an indeterminate. And this English garden kitchen favorite is a must have for lovers of the traditional tomato flavor known for its versatility. This variety loves hot, humid weather and grows well in greenhouses. The color and flesh are deep crimson and are full of amazing acidic flavor. So, um, and this one looks a little bit more like like a cherry tomato, maybe a little bit larger um, than a cherry tomato, but I'm excited to try this one as well. Okay, with that being said, let's talk about how I'm gonna be planting up my tomato seeds because this process is gonna be a little bit different than how you've pretty much seen all of my other <laughs> uh, seeds starting going. So let me show you. Now I am gonna, always, as always, start with my Burger BM7 potting soil. I don't typically use a seed starting mix. Um, I don't like to buy the extra, um, pay for that extra kind of specialty soil. 
when I have located a potting soil that has a really great, like loose, airy um, feel to it. So I feel like my seeds do well enough in that one without having to purchase additional soil. Now, a couple of things about having this potting soil versus something like seed starting mix. A lot of times seed starting mix or specifically indoor potting mix are sterile. So um, you'll have less issues with disease, fungus gnat, things like that. I don't really stress about it. I don't see enough of a difference to warrant myself buying seed starting mix, but that's me. That doesn't mean that you should have to do this potting soil mix. You should try both. I've tried both. You should try seed starting mix. You should try potting soil. Find out what works best for you and go with that. Don't just go off of what all the other gardeners say. Try it out for yourself and make sure you're getting what is going to work best for your seed starting process. Okay, a little bit of a different situation. I'm not going to be starting my seeds in my typical little 12 uh, seed starting cell containers from Amazon that I love so much. What you want to do with tomato seeds is remember how I talked about how the stems can grow roots. We want to start it in a longer, taller container as opposed to a wider container. And the reason being is we're going to use a specific potting up or starting method on this so that we can get more roots on the stems as these continue to grow and create more robust plants for outside. So basically what we're going to do is I'm starting with this container. Um, I don't know if these are on my Amazon storefront. If not, I'll try to add them. It does have drainage at the bottom. You can also use so like red solo cups, plastic cups, something along those something. Something that's taller is what you need. And basically I'm only going to fill this about a third of the way with soil. That's it. That's all I'm putting in it. And then at that point, I'm just going to take, we'll start with the money maker right here. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a couple of seeds. We'll start with two seeds in here and I'm going to drop them in there easy peasy. And then I'm just going to come in, I'm going to firm, kind of push them down, make sure they have really great contact with the soil. And then I'm just going to come over the top lightly with it, a quarter inch of the soil across the top. And that's it. All right. Now, why did I not fill this up? The idea is that these um, seeds will sprout, they'll put on seedlings. And once the seedling grows up and over the, um, uh, the lip of the container, at that point in time, I will backfill with additional soil almost to the top of the container. And all that additional stem that will then be underneath the soil will produce additional roots and make it a stronger plant. At that point, you know, so we will have, you know, four or five inches worth of root space. And as my seed leaf continues growing taller, it'll probably be at least a foot tall by the time I go out to plant it outside. At that time, I'll still strip off two thirds of the leaves and plant, uh, plant the rest of that stem underneath the soil as well, with just a little bit of leaves at the top. And that will give me almost 12 inches of root structure, strong root structure underneath the soil. And the more roots that you get, the stronger your plant's going to be, the more disease resistant your plant's going to be, and perhaps the higher yield your tomato plant is going to be. Now, I am not looking to start a tons and tons and tons of um, stuff here. So I'm going to start probably three of each um, set of tomatoes. And the reason I'm only doing that is because I don't have tons and tons of space. Like y'all, I said, it's really hard for me to give up <laughs> space um, from my flowers for vegetables. So this is a me thing. <laughs> so I don't want to start a ton more plants than what I actually need. And so I'm just going to probably start three of each variety. And then a lot of these I will restart probably end of June, July, maybe beginning of July. I'll start a whole nother round for um, the fall, for my fall season, because all of these most likely will die off or stop production um, midsummer. So you want to start your tomato seeds about six to eight weeks before the last frost, and then you want to plant them outside about two to three weeks after the last frost. They are very susceptible to cold weather. They do not do well outside, so that's something that's super important. 
if you have something like a greenhouse so you could probably get yours outside sooner than later okay we've got them all planted up and at this point what i'm going to do is put them all into a 10 by 20 water reservoir just like that and then what i'll do is go ahead and add water to the bottom of this and allow these to start soaking up water and then once i've planted all my other seeds i'll get these all set up with humidity domes underneath the lights and show y'all what that looks like okay and tomato seeds do benefit from a heating mat um the warmer it is the more likely they're going to germinate quicker but it's not absolutely required so if you want to go ahead and cheat and start your tomato seeds a couple weeks early but not turn the heating mat on you can maybe get away with that as well they also prefer to be bottom watered all seeds should be bottom watered as well so pour water into the reservoir and allow this plant to suck up the water once it's had several hours suck up the water dump out any of the extra water so that your seedlings aren't just sitting in water as always we like to put or i like to put a humidity dome on top of my seeds once the seeds have germinated at least 50 percent of them have germinated then i remove the humidity dome for the rest of the growing process if you leave that humidity dome throughout um, the entire growing process you are more likely to have disease and um, damping off issues things along those lines with your seedlings i did want to also say regarding fertilizing i do fertilize my seedlings about every two to three weeks with a liquid fertilizer, specifically Alaska fish emulsion. And I highly suggest you guys do that as well, especially for something like tomatoes, which are heavy feeders. Okay, there are two more varieties of seeds we're gonna start today. I am gonna be starting a bell pepper. It is a lilac bell pepper. And it is a stunning unique variety that stands out with its vibrant lilac purple hue. The eye-catching pepper adds a pop of color to any dish, making it an exciting addition to salads, stir fries, and more. Its sweet mild flavor makes it a versatile ingredient in both raw and cooked preparations. And the lilac bell pepper's crunchy texture and delightful taste elevate the culinary experience, provide a fresh twist to traditional bell pepper dishes. With its alluring appearance and delicious taste, this pepper is sure to impress and inspire creativity in the kitchen. I saw it on in my gardener and I was like, I must have it. It's beautiful. That's literally why I picked it. So maybe not. The, I think that's the flower gardener in me that I picked it that way. Um, the fruits are about three inches in length. And um, this one um, is about 10 to 21 um, days germination. I forgot to say the tomatoes are typically about five to 10 days germination. I'm just um, going back on that. So I'm only, this is the only variety of bell pepper that I am starting this year with the reasoning because if you guys remember, I overwintered my peppers and they're doing awesome. So I don't, I mean, there's a friggin' jalapeno pepper on here right now. So I overwintered um, Jedi uh, hot peppers and Escamillo sweet peppers. And I loved both of those varieties last year. I overwintered the plants. The plants are doing beautifully. I don't feel the need to start additional bell pepper plants of those varieties. Um, so that's why I'm the only one I'm starting is the lilac bell pepper. Now I am going to be starting my bell peppers in my traditional um, trays, uh, my 12 seed cell trays from Amazon. And I'm just running my soil over here using my fingers to gently pack it down a little bit now these seeds need about be about a fourth of an inch deep some people have asked do i need to pre-soak my tomato or um, bell pepper or eggplant seeds that is something that helps with some seeds um, but i wouldn't stress about doing it with the tomato or bell pepper seeds I think what I'm going to do, put a little bit more in there, that one. I hesitate to start 12 plants. However, I do have friends, my friends, Crystal and Richard, they love to grow things like this. So if I go ahead and start this for them, they can have some. My friend Kristen will love these because they're a beautiful purple tone. She'll love that in her garden. So I'll go ahead and start a full tray. So I'm just going to push down on these, making sure they have really good contact with the soil. Just like that. And then we're going to come back across the top.
just like that. All right, and then I'm just gonna add water about 40% to halfway into the water reservoir. Put that there. Okay, and add my humidity dome. Okay, and then for the bell peppers, my humidity dome is closed and I will leave it, um, the humidity dome on until at least 50% of the seeds have germinated. At that point in time, I will take the humidity dome off. Bell peppers can also benefit from a heating mat. So I'm gonna put mine on the heating mat. They typically like to be 75 to 80 to five degrees for germination. So definitely a heating mat. And these will germinate in about 10 to 21 days. Okay, and then the new to me vegetable that I'm starting from seed this year is eggplant. And once again, the flower <laughs> grower in me saw these and were like, they're so pretty. <laughs> so I, that's why I got them. I don't eat a lot of eggplant. I think if it was like readily available in my, in my garden, I definitely would because I like vegetables. We eat them all the time. They're supposed to be pretty good for stir fry and in a, um, several different um, types of food. I eat a lot of stir fry in this house. We eat a lot of fresh vegetables and a lot of fresh protein. Um, so we do tons of stir fry. So the variety I ended up with is called Lasada de Gandia eggplant. And it's a beautiful Italian heirloom eggplant, has gorgeous violet and white streaks. This sweet eggplant is oval shaped and easy to cook as it requires no peeling, which that was one of the other reasons I got this one is because I, as little prep as possible with my vegetables, I, I'm here for that. <laughs> the plant size on these, it's only 20 to 30 inches tall. So I like the smaller size because this can be grown in a container and grown as like a patio type of plant. For germination, it is 60 to 85 degrees, so I will go ahead and put it on a germination on a heating mat and it germinates in 7 to 14 days. Now, all of these vegetables require full sun, tomatoes, bell peppers, all of them are full sun. I didn't bring that up at the beginning, but yes, they're all full sun. And with this one, since these are new to me and the plants are so small, I'm probably going to start a full tray of them as well. Because like I said, if I end up not wanting all of them I can always give them to friends or other gardeners one of my um another gardener in my area is like every day I go to pick up my son from elementary school and one of the teachers in the pickup line she has a garden as well and I just asked her the other day I was like hey are you growing again this year and she's like yep I am she was talking about the stuff that she already has in the ground ready to go and I was like if I have extra seedlings do you want them she was like absolutely <laughs> so this would be fun as well now these seeds are planted about a quarter of an inch deep as well and I'm putting two per um, container Once again, I'm going to pour about 40% to halfway in the water reservoir. And for those of you who are new to my channel, you might notice that I don't pre-moisten my soil. I don't like to. I think it's really messy. And I do all this inside. So I just um, use the dry soil and then I put the water in the reservoir and allow it to soak up. does a really good job working out any air bubbles, things along those lines. And I don't feel like starting with the dry and then having the water wick up from the bottom has, you know, had any kind of direct impact on the amount of seedlings that I've grown or the quality. Okay, and then humidity dome goes on with the humidity dome closed and um, we will leave this on until at least 50% of the seeds are um, germinated and at that time we'll remove it. So one thing I wish I had done when ordering these cups um, a year or so ago I wish I had confirmed that they fit well into the tr this uh, eight by um, or this uh, ten by twenty tray because they really don't not very well, and so I always have to end up kind of leaning one of them uh, this back row which is not necessarily ideal. Well, if I don't have a humidity dome. I can absolutely just come over the top of this with saran wrap, plastic wrap. You just want to make sure you have a nice, really good seal. That press and seal would be really, really good too. So, and then if you've got that plastic wrap on and you're like, oh, it feels like too much humidity, you can always just poke a little hole 
um, directly over, you know, wherever you need to, to release a little bit of humidity. But you don't have to go purchase Community Dome if you don't want to. You can definitely get away with something like the plastic um, saran wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and put the eggplant and the bell pepper under here. Okay, and I cannot find my larger humidity domes. It's because I don't use them very often because I'm always working with the small scale stuff. So you get to see me struggle with saran wrap. Oh, I'm so not good with saran wrap, guys. The struggle is real. So let me see what I can do pulling some of this out. And I always have a hard time getting saran wrap or plastic wrap to stick. So I might actually end up taping some of this on here just to make sure I have a more secure seal. And those of you who are just giggling at me right now, <laughs> tell me your tricks and ways with working with plastic crackers, wrapper saran wrap. <laughs> Why is the struggle so real for me? And, um, Usually I put a couple of layers because it makes it stronger and easier to kind of maneuver and move around. And if I go over the side like this, I'm going really, let me push this back some. I went far enough over the side like this. I can then kind of take my plastic wrap and tuck it into the side of this um, water reservoir like that. It gives me a little bit better seal you guys will get to see how they do with plastic wrap. I don't love to use plastic wrap. One of the main reasons is because it's hard to reuse and I don't like one time use plastic if I can get away with it. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, we are all set getting these started from seeds. There are some other fruits and vegetables made growing from seeds this year. This is the main ones that I wanted to get started right now. Anything else that I'm gonna be growing will be new to me stuff. I will still document the process, but I will not be an expert on it. But I'm really excited to get all of these going. I'm excited about the look and scale and texture that all of these can add to my garden mixed with some of my flowers and worked into some of the flowers. I'm going to have some in pots and containers. I'm going to have some directly in the raised beds. The ones that are going to be in the raised beds are just going to be like a single or maybe a double um, set in the beds with flowers all around them. Um, it's not going to be like a whole raised bed of tomatoes or peppers. So I'm going to have a little bit of a different approach. Try it out in a, you know, like one pepper plant in an actual flower bed and then one pepper plant in um, a pot. See if there's a difference in the yield of fruit. I think it'll be fun to experiment with all of that. So we learned a lot. We talked about indeterminate versus determinate on tomatoes. We talked about how tomatoes can grow roots on their stems. And I showed you my method for getting more roots on the stems for a stronger, more robust plant. As the tomatoes seedlings continue to grow up, I'll be sure to document the process and show you guys when I am adding more soil to increase that um, amount of roots on the stem. We also talked about bell peppers, getting bell peppers started and why I'm only starting one variety this year because I had such good success with overwintering mine. And then also starting a new variety to me, eggplant, which will be super fun. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing some spring bulbs that I'm going to be forcing inside. We are going to be um, potting up all the coleus, taking additional propagation cuts from them, potting up coleus for double the amount of coleus that I currently have. I'm also going to be planting some bare root roses from Walmart, and I am starting another round of cut flower seeds. So we have a very busy couple of weeks coming up, but I'm excited. You know, I always used to treat January as a time off for gardening. And I think over the years, my thought process has shifted for my own garden and my location in that I used to think, oh, it's January, it's winter, I'll take it off. January is actually a really busy time for zone eight for my area. We're preparing for the gardening. And so I've really been way busier picking it up this January. Where I'm seeing the time where I will be taking more of a break is July and August. Um, 
there's just, everything's dead, <laughs> dying. And really what you're doing is preparing for your fall garden at that point in this particular area, North Texas zone A, or zone eight, you know? And so I think my attitude has changed a little bit regarding that of when my time off actually is for gardening, which is kind of fun. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Talk to me about what vegetables you have grown, what ones you think I should grow and that would work well in my area it might work well with the style of my garden lots of y'all have been watching for quite a long time so you probably have a really good idea or some good suggestions on what you think i should grow as well i would really appreciate that and then if you have any additional tips for starting tomatoes bell peppers and eggplant make sure you drop those below and share remember that the comment section is like a massive um just kind of container of wealth, uh, in wealth of information. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a, it's a massive wealth of information. Put your information down there, answer questions. If you see people asking questions, you don't have to wait for me. Um, a lot of y'all I know have gardened probably triple the amount of time I've gardened. So you might have some really awesome information and make sure you check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.